Hello, everybody, and welcome to session 13 of our data visualization class. Um, today is the last day of heavy R code, um, and it's the last day of our special sequence on um, specific applications of data visualization principles to specific fields. Um, so uh, a couple sessions ago, we looked at how you can visualize time. Um, the session before this one, we looked at how you can visualize space and geography. And today we're going to be looking at how you visualize text. And hopefully this is exciting because um, visualizing text and dealing with text data is one of the most difficult things you can do. Um, often when you, when you take statistics, statistics classes, you deal with like um, columns of numbers and you can figure out the averages and you can figure out means and medians and you can run regression models. You can do all of this cool stuff with numbers. But as soon as you have like a free response column in a survey, you can no longer figure out the average value of the free response. Um, you can no longer figure out, you, can, you can't include that in a regression. You can't do anything with it um, other than read it and then um, figure out what the general meaning is. Um, there's a whole world of qualitative research where people go out and interview people, um, read texts, read old historical documents, and use systematic methods to distill whatever they find in those texts or in those interviews into something. Um, and so what we can do is we can kind of simulate some of that um, using um, R. And we can use quantitative methods on qualitative data and find patterns in things. Um, and it's a really exciting way of, of looking at text. Um, the broader principle for this is called distant reading. Um, it was partially invented nowadays, um, these, these different methods, for a field of humanities called digital humanities, where there are historians and there are English professors and there are um, other kind of more in the humanities world um, professors and other researchers who are using R and these, these kind of text-based methods to do qualitative research to do intense reading of books and intense reading of historical documents and archives, but using R to help guide that and to help find patterns uh, more quickly than spending a year reading the archives. Um, and so the stuff we're going to cover right here is not a replacement for close reading and for um, detailed interviews and parsing what's happening in the interviews and detailed qualitative research. Um, it's not a replacement for that. It's a supplement to it. It's some tools that you can use to visualize data way beyond like simple word clouds and things like that. And so hopefully it's exciting. Um, there's lots of code in the example. Um, in the video for the example, it's less code heavy. Um, at this point in the semester, I'm just throwing up heavily commented code on the example page. And if you want to follow along, cool. If you don't, cool. It's there for your reference in the future. Um, there's no way you can learn all of this stuff in one session. Um, there's a whole book just for text analysis. Um, it's the tidy text mining book that you looked at before, before this session. Um, and you can take like a whole semester just on that book. Um, you can get a PhD in digital humanities and you basically work on these kinds of methods for the whole course um, and the whole degree. So this is like a super fast crash course in the kind of some of the things you can do with this stuff to visualize text. So it should be exciting. Um, and it's going to be fairly brief because it's mostly just an overview of what you can do um, with some examples of how to do it and then lots of code for how to do it um, if you're interested. So we're going to cover two topics right now. Um, let's go ahead and go to the slides you can see. Um, so the plan for today is we'll talk about um, how you deal with qualitative text-based data and where you would see it in the real world and what are some of the issues that we face when we have to visualize it. And then we'll do a quick crash course into computational linguistics and digital humanities and give you a brief tour of some of the, the methods you can apply to analyze data um, that is text-based and what you can do um, and some of the cool findings you can discover. Um, you saw some examples of this in your reading. I gave you a list of different articles um, that other people have published that look at text, um, like song lyrics or actual books. Um, it's similar to those, but we'll, we'll kind of give them specific categories and give a way of organizing all of these different methods. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> 